Hello there, my name is Jason Schmaltz and I'm an AMGA single pitch instructor. And today I'm gonna to share with you some tips and tricks that I've learned over the last few months in multi-pitch climbing to make the climbing a lot more efficient and enable you to maybe achieve more objectives in a day or maybe just finish up early to get down to have a hamburger and fries. Uh, hey, if you don't mind, I am trying to grow our channel and we're really trying to up our subscriber count. So if you like this content or if you've checked out a few of our videos and enjoy them, please click on the subscribe button to the bottom right. I really appreciate it. It really motivates me to make more content. I appreciate that. Uh, so let's get into the content on multi-pitch climbing. And there's different areas that you can gain efficiencies. Uh, the first area is in the planning. There's two different styles of multi-pitch climbing uh, structure. One is where you alternate leads and the second is where you do block leading. And I would recommend from an efficiency standpoint to do block leading for two main reasons. Uh, firstly, it enables the climber who's the leader to really get in the leader mindset and stay in it. And that helps them to be mentally ready and sharp uh, for the, the pitches that they need to lead. Uh, additionally, they can uh, pick out the uh, pitches that are their strengths. So if they're a strong chimney climber or crack climber, uh, you can have them lead those and vice versa uh, for face climbing or something like that. Um, the second reason to do block leading over alternating is that you don't have to do a gear changeover at every single belay station. Uh, so the uh, uh, belay station exchanges become much more quick because uh, you don't have to handle as much gear and also uh, lessens a chance to drop gear. Uh, the second thing uh, to gain efficiency on uh, planning is when you do do a changeover in a block style lead um, is to maybe identify a hanging belay to do that. Um, it's very efficient to do block style leading when you can uh, just pancake rope on the ground and then flip it. Uh, but it's harder to do block style lead if someone's going to lead to a hanging belay uh, and then lap coil and then they're going to lead the next pitch as well because it's harder to pancake flip the lap coil. It can be done but it can get kind of messy. It's almost better to just reflake. Uh, so if you can identify one of the pitches where there's a hanging belay to do the switch over and that will make that, uh, b that belay station go that much uh, more efficiently. The second place to gain efficiencies is in the actual climbing. Uh, so when I started trad climbing, the main pieces that I used were cams and then tri cams and then nuts. Um, but it turns out that cams are by far the most uh, efficient uh, gear placement when it comes to climbing. Uh, firstly, they're the easiest to get in and out. Uh, I've had many climbs where someone's placed a nut, especially a small nut, and it's just really hard for me to wiggle it out when I'm following, or the same thing with the tri-cam. Uh, the other benefit of cans versus nuts and tri-cams is they already have a carabiner that, can, uh, that you can clip the rope in. So you don't have to mess with alpine draws and do extra clips and taking things off your belt and extending things. Um, and that really uh, saves time, okay? So as much as you can, I'd recommend trying to use cam placements over nuts and tri-cams. Uh, the second uh, way that you can uh, climb a little bit more efficiently is by minimizing the amount of times that you extend, uh, specifically with an alpine draw. So um, with cams, I showed you, you already have a carabiner to clip into. Uh, if I didn't have a carabiner to clip into or I want to extend a cam, I have to take an alpine draw off my belt and clip it onto whatever piece of gear I'm using. And then if I want to extend, I have to unclip and then clip again. And then my follower has to come by and he has to unclip. And most likely this next part will take place at the belay station. Uh, but then you have to rebuild the alpine draw, so there's another clip, and then there's another clip back to your belt, okay? And I actually timed myself on taking off an alpine draw, uh, extending it fully, and then building it back and putting it back on my belt. For four alpine draws, it took me 90 seconds. So if you consider a pitch where you may place uh, enough placements where you do eight alpine draws and extend them, uh, that would be three minutes to do that. 
And then if you consider a climb with six pitches, that would be six times three minutes, and that would be 18 minutes. So that would be quite significant uh, for a climb. The next place where you can gain efficiencies is at the blaze station itself. Uh, so by doing a little bit of extra pre-work, um, I can have uh, the blaze set up quite quickly when I arrive at it. So I always like to uh, have a quad pre-built because most of my belay stations are going to have two points to clip into, whether it's trad anchors or bolted anchors. And I have my quad pre-rigged on a 240 centimeter Dyneema sling uh, with two uh, non-locking carabiners that I will clip into the anchors themselves. And I also have the, uh, the uh, locking carabiner that I will clip into with my clove. And as I start to build this anchor, I want to be thinking about where I'm going to be going next. Uh, if I'm going to be leading, will I be going off to the left? And if so, I want to be placing myself on the left side before I get clipped in. Vice versa, if I want to lead to the right, I need to be on the right side. Or if my partner is going to lead to the right next, he needs to be on the right side, so I need to be on the left side. So just going through that mental exercise helps you get set up to not have to do a do-si-do -si -do, uh, when it's time for the next pitch to be uh, taken on. And another great thing about the quad is that it has uh, two master points. And so I'll go ahead and clip into my master point here. My clove. And then I would go ahead and pull rope up for my partner until I got to them and they'd say, that's me. And then another place where you can have some pre-rigging already done is your ATC. So I have my ATC all ready to be clipped in to this anchor. And I can lock down. And I can go ahead and put the rope in and clip that in. And what you probably noticed there is I never had to take my ATC out of a carabiner. I always had it in a carabiner and most of the time clipped to something. There was a little second there that I had to take it out, but there was no fumbling. Okay, so I highly recommend that you have your ATC all pre-rigged. And now I can blame my partner up. And then once my partner arrives and he's going to go off to the next pitch, so this will represent my partner. Um, I can actually um, go ahead and take this ATC off the master point and just direct clip it into my belay loop. And if you notice there, I never had the ATC disconnected from either the rope or carabiner together. It was always on the rope or on myself or the anchor. Uh, and now they're ready to go. I'm ready to belay them off. There may come a time when you arrive at the anchor station and there's a three-point anchor that you need to build. Uh, so I've simulated this here with uh, using all three of these hangers. Um, and the way that you do that is, again, you could take a sling. Uh, preferably and get that tab out of the way right off the bat and kind of what I like to do where that tab is is to go ahead and just build a clove hitch and that locks that tab in place okay and let's go ahead and build that out like that and then I can take my locker and I recommend doing this and not trying to use your fingers to pull uh, this through. So I'll actually do a figure eight just to uh, bring the master point up a little bit. Okay. And then I can clove in. And one thing to note here is on uh, this style of anchor, if you're leaning to the side or to like one side like this and that it, it's loose, you can actually take the uh, strand here and make some extra loops around the carabiner 
to try to get it less loose and more more equalized okay so that's one good trick if uh, you start to weight this and it's just a little bit off um, but anyway uh, another trick when you have a three-point anchor system like this is that you can use the shelf so you can see there's a loop uh, basically to each anchor point and if I take one strand of each loop you preferably want to do either all the back or all the front um, I can then uh, put my belay device on there for my partner to come up I'll lock that down and I can use that shelf so I have a little extra real estate in this master point okay uh, and then I can belay them up now another good thing to think about while you're belaying is what can you be doing while you're belaying your partner? So if I'm going to do a gear changeover, I may, as my partner stops at various places to rest or pick up gear, I may start unloading the rack. And so I'll belay them a little bit and I'll unload another piece or two. Okay. So by the time that they get up here, they have the entire rack ready for them. Another thing I may do while I'm belaying my partner is have a drink of water or have a snack so that I'm not doing it uh, while we're waiting on me. Uh, if you find yourself just kind of staring off into the breeze uh, or, or only belaying, you may say, hey, is there anything I could be doing right now, looking at the next pitch in the guidebook or something like that as my partner is climbing up? Last thing to think about when you're climbing multi-pitch is what if you don't have a lot of material when you arrive at the anchor station? What are your options? Uh, one great option is if you happen to happen to have an alpine draw, uh, you can use this to actually make an anchor. Uh, so you would take, basically disassemble the alpine draw, uh, put the two non-lockers on the appropriate anchor points, and then take the sling, and again try to get the tab out of the way, so I got the tab up close to that orange carabiner. And so now I have my V here. And then this is going to be used to make my master point. And this carabiner will actually be locked, will serve as my master point. So I take the V, I put the V through the carabiner, and then wrap it around the pair, and allow it to come back up to the uh, pointy side of the carabiner in a girth hitch, okay? And this is actually considered a redundant master point. Uh, if one of these uh, were to fail, and I continue to pull here, uh, this girth hitch will not allow the sling to pull through, okay? But I don't clove into this. I actually, this is a loop that I don't want to open the gate of. So I would actually hook another carabiner to that, and I would clove into that carabiner and lock down, okay? And then I could also um, belay my partner off of this master point as well. Okay, and lock that down. Allow them to come up. The last option, if you don't have a lot of gear uh, when you arrive at the belay station and you, basically the only thing you have to build an anchor with is the climbing rope, you have a couple options. Uh, one option is to use the two points uh, so I would take the first anchor point and go ahead and clove into this. Lock down on that. And then I would come to the other point. Again, I would clove in. And then I would build my master point here. And then this is where I could belay, okay? Now, uh, I am redundant here uh, with these two clothes. However, uh, if this were to fail, um, there would be a significant uh, extension. So if I don't trust this point or it's suspect for any reason, um, I can allow some slack 
and then uh, go to build the same system here. The reason I do clove hitches is because I can then adjust it if it's not the ideal length. And now I have this extra um, rope that I can clove into uh, the master point as well. Okay? And that way if I have a failure, the extension will be minimal. My last option with the climbing rope uh, is my only piece of material to make an anchor is to use a natural anchor like this tree. And the way I would do that is I would pull out some rope, get a bite, wrap it around the tree. And then you have a couple different options to finish this. Uh, I would just uh, do a bowline. And then an overhand finish, or I did a bullet on a bite, I should say, with an overhand finish. Okay. And if I felt like I needed to, I could cl clove hitch myself to this. But now I have an anchor point here that can be used uh, to either extend out with a loop, or I can just belay off this directly. Uh, either, either way would make sense, depending on the terrain I had. Hey, I hope you found that, or I hope you found this video useful uh, and can use some of these tips to help you uh, climb more efficiently on big multi-pitch climbs and uh, be able to get maybe more objectives or you just get back to the uh, pizza joint a little earlier. Um, hey, appreciate you tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. I really appreciate the subscribes especially. It really motivates me. And hey, I'll see you out on the crag.